Hello, boys and girls, and those who sexually identify as a dinosaur. I'm Mr. Dapperton, and today we're joined with Shane Killian. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us, Shane Killian. Today, we're going to have one hell of an episode, hopefully, and I hope you enjoy it. And remember to hit like, share, and subscribe. Let's begin. And finally, new rule, nothing with crypto in the title ever turns out good. You don't like cryptography? You know the thing that keeps everything from your emails to your online banking secure? There is a mania rising in the country these days about cryptocurrency and how the train is leaving the station, so you better get on. Tesla has jumped in with both feet, and Microsoft accepts it for software now. Etsy, Etsy accepts it now, and so does PayPal and Starbucks and Whole Foods and Home Depot. Oh my God, people are actually trading in something other than your government's approved currency? Hang them! One in 10 Americans used their stimulus checks to invest in one of thousands of cryptocurrencies in existence. So they took money they got that was created out of thin air, and so it's based on inflation, which means its purchasing power is going to be diminished, and they put it into something that no authority can manipulate? I don't see the problem. Bitcoin being the most famous, but there's also Ethereum, Binance, Tether, even one called Cumrocket. <laughs> there's also one called Dogecoin that someone started as a joke, but... Look how mad he's getting that people are cheering for it. As far as I can tell, it's exactly the same as all the other cryptocurrencies, because the whole thing is a joke takes one to know one. I fully understand that our financial system isn't perfect. Okay, the Federal Reserve had one job, and that was to back up our currency with gold, to make sure it keeps its value forever. And also so there wouldn't be any banking crises ever again. What ended up happening was the government tried paying off its debts and what it owes by printing more and more money. And the result was far worse banking crises than it ever happened, from the Great Depression to 2008. Let's say if there's something of value out there, the reason why it's valuable, half the reason, more than half the reason it's valuable, is because there's less of it than there is demand. And the same applies to currency. The price of a good or service is a ratio between the value of the good or service and the value of the currency. The more money you have chasing the same amount of goods and services, the more inflation you have and the less purchasing power each individual dollar has. And that's what happened to the US dollar. It lost 96% of its value and it keeps getting worse and worse the more they print it. Eventually, it'll be worth nothing. But at least it's real. It's not backed up by gold like it's supposed to be. It's virtually uh, worthless. I mean, sooner or later, the paper that it's printed on is going to be worth more than the value of the money. That's already happening. The current Jefferson Nickels have a melt value of 5.91 cents. That means that if you melted them down, you'd have more than 5 cents worth of material. And they have to keep changing what money is made of. Pennies don't have copper anymore, because the copper pennies made up to 1982 have a melt value of almost three times their face value. Silver coins made before 1965 are worth 20 times their face value. If that's not fake money, then I don't know what is. Whereas the value of Bitcoin has increased over a hundred million percent since its inception. Ethereum has increased over 26 thousand percent and dogecoin which you were mocking increased 221 thousand percent so which one is the joke here which one sounds like real money to you oh definitely the federal reserve notes that it lost 96 percent of its value the, the thing that's going up in value is worthless actually <laughs> what the hell you're an idiot this is literally one of the dumbest videos i have ever seen on the internet ever I've been doing this for like seven years, and I have never seen a video this fucking dumb before. Apple stock is worth money because Apple makes thousand dollar phones that everyone buys and then drops in the toilet. <laughs> but Dogecoin recently rallied to be worth more than the market cap of Ford and Kraft Foods, and it has no product and no workers. It's just Easter Bunny cartoon cash. No product? 
moron, the Dogecoin is the product. And I'm sure the developers are scratching their head about you saying there are no workers. I've read articles about cryptocurrency, I've had it explained to me, and I still don't get it, and neither do you. I love how he admits he doesn't understand it whatsoever. Hey, I mean, that's clear, Bill. Everybody knows that you don't understand stand Or anyone else. Lots of people understand it way better than you, Bill. And I'll explain why. So... There's these things called nerds. <laughs> and in 2008, one of them, we don't know who, because this person or group of persons is still anonymous, made up Bitcoin out of thin air using the fake name Satoshi Nakamoto, which I think are the Japanese words for monopoly money. Wow, projection much? Now, capitalism, of course, has always contained an element where instead of actually making something or providing a service for money, you could make money in the exciting field of money. But we knew money had to originate from and be generated by something real somewhere, to which cryptocurrency says, no, it doesn't. Wait, are you saying math isn't real? Maybe this is why Warren Buffett says, cryptocurrencies basically have no value and they don't produce anything. Or maybe he says that because he makes money helping rich people protect their money from taxes and inflation, meaning he makes more money the more you and I lose purchasing power. What you hope is that somebody else comes along and pays you more money for them later on, but then that, that person's got the problem. In terms of value, zero. Meanwhile, in reality, value is subjective, and it's based on supply and demand, how much of it people want versus how much of it there is. And it's also based on utility, what you can do with it. People want a secure form of electronic money protected from inflation and the banking system. Cryptocurrency delivers that utility. How are you going to look your audience in the eye and tell them that $54,000 for a single Bitcoin is worthless? And uh, about a currency that's losing 96% of its value is real money. I mean, you're absolutely delusional. Absolutely delusional. Cryptocurrency is going up in value too. But to you, that's worthless? Laughable. Or as another analyst put it, it's an open Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme works by getting new investors to pay off the old. So how is that even remotely like cryptocurrency? And how is that not exactly like fiat money where government goes into debt creating new money to pay off its previous debts? It's like having an imaginary best friend who's also a banker. As opposed to having real best friends who are bankers so you can steal purchasing power from their depositors. This is how the world economy crashed in 2009. No, Bill. It crashed in 2009 because our fake money system generated cheap credit in the housing market, making it appear that there was more demand for housing than there really was. You're really going to blame Bitcoin for crashing the economy in 2008? Bitcoin wasn't invented until 2009. What the f*** are you doing, dude? It wasn't the lost value in actual houses that sunk us. It was this virtual market. No, it was fiat money generating cheap credit. Our problem here is at root, not economic, but psychological. Oh, there's a psychological problem here, all right. People who have been raised in a virtual world are starting to believe they can really live in it. How are we not living it already? I mean, I know you're a boomer who probably has to go find a four-year-old to help him turn his computer on, but you're dealing with a generation to whom the internet is their native land, a land where you will always be a foreigner. And cryptocurrency is literally a game. Bitcoins are created by what they call mining. Mining. But not the kind of mining that's done by seven dwarves who share a woman. <laughs> His dumbass fans are like, <laughs> I get that reference. This kind of mining involves using rooms full of supercomputers to make something that is purposefully arbitrary. Essentially, one computer thinks of a number between one and infinity, and other computers take trillions of guesses at what it is. Uh, no, that's computationally impossible, Bill. 
Cryptocurrency works by constantly adjusting the difficulty so that a block is created at regular intervals. 10 minutes for Bitcoin, 2 minutes for Dash, and so on. It actually doesn't matter how many computers are involved. It's the old game of I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10, except times a gazillion. It's called math. It does math. And the guy guessing the number lives in China, and the guy who knows the number lives in the Matrix. Bill's humor is literally just mentioning movies that people have seen, and his fans eat it up and they go wild just by referencing a movie they've seen. That's how dumb his humor is. It, it's insane. I have never seen humor so fucking dumb before. Come on, guys, don't take cryptocurrency seriously. Isn't math stupid? Take that, work. Yeah, you shouldn't invest in cryptocurrency because it's free money. That's literally his argument. It's free money that you don't have to work for. It just goes up in value automatically. You don't have to work for it. It's bad. Do I need to spell this out? There is something inherently not credible about creating hundreds of billions in virtual wealth with nothing ever actually being accomplished. You mean like when the Federal Reserve creates money by typing some zeros into a computer? Bill, our money is already virtual, and it has been for decades. The question is, do you really want it in a way that politicians and bankers can arbitrarily manipulate, as opposed to based on sound math that no one can manipulate? That's literally what he's saying right now. He's saying cryptocurrency is bad because it goes up in value for no reason. But Federal Reserve notes are good because it goes down in value. And uh, you working hard for less and less and less and less and less is a good thing. That's literally what he's arguing. And no actual product made or service rendered. It's like Tinkerbell's light. Its power source is based solely on enough children believing in it. Now you're saying cryptocurrency is imaginary? Are you serious? I don't think you know the difference between virtual and imaginary. I seriously don't think you know the difference. <laughs> and unfortunately, what is real is the unfathomable amount of electricity those massive supercomputers suck up for their mining. You do know that not all cryptocurrencies are mined, right? Some of them are based on proof of stake, not proof of work. You guys are going to love this. This is the best part. He blames fucking cryptocurrency for climate change. He actually does that, dude. If this isn't government propaganda, then government propaganda isn't real, okay? Because this is the definition of fucking government propaganda. He blamed the fucking cryptocurrencies on the housing crash of 2008 when cryptocurrencies weren't even invented until 2009 then he said that cryptocurrency is imaginary and it doesn't have any real value whatsoever because he doesn't know the difference between virtual or imaginary then he said it's not real money that the u.s dollar totally is he called it a ponzi scheme now he's saying that cryptocurrencies cause climate change sounds like government propaganda to me or listen to this the power being used right now to guess numbers and win imaginary prizes is the same as all the electricity needed to light all of New York State. Except the governor's office where they use romantic candles. <laughs> Bitcoin uses more electricity per transaction than any other method known to mankind. Just one uses more energy than a million visa transactions and has the same carbon footprint as 85,000 hours of watching YouTube. What a 15-year-old calls the weekend. Yeah, keep showing your disdain for the young people, Boomer. Just yell at them to get off your lawn and end the segment already. Bitcoin uses more energy than Netflix, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Google combined. What he doesn't seem to understand is that the reason why all this power is being put in is because it's profitable. The amount of Bitcoin they get in return for mining is worth more than the power bill it generates. When that changes, fewer people will mine, but it won't change the transaction times one iota. It'll still be one block solved every 10 minutes. 
Even if the only miners in the world were a couple of 286s in a closet somewhere, it would still solve one block every 10 minutes. It would just adjust the difficulty. I mean, cars are bad for the climate, but at least they take you somewhere. Are you actually arguing that money is valueless? I mean, wouldn't it suck if you worked, worked, and worked, and the currency that you use kept going down in value and your labor was virtually worthless? I, I think fixing that problem is worth something. Not to mention the problem of international money transfers, which are incredibly expensive and can take months. Not to mention the added X factor of the exchanges. Whereas a Dash transaction can happen between any two people anywhere in the world in less than two seconds, securely and irreversibly. It, it's worth a little energy. It, it's, it's worth a lot, in fact. Especially if the value of what, what you work for goes up in value like it does with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. It, it going up in value is going to make you rich eventually. That's a good thing. That's worth everybody being prosperous. That's not worth anything to you. In Tiger Woods case, a tree. <laughs> but this, this, this is just a beanie baby that runs on coal. How can a company like Tesla be all in on saving the planet with electric cars and then participate in destroying it with this completely unnecessary online play money? Well, maybe they know something you don't. In fact, maybe they know a lot of things you don't. In fact, maybe you don't know a damn thing and people should stop listening to you. Almost all the people who tout Bitcoin and deal in Bitcoin and who won't shut the fuck up about Bitcoin, <laughs> the millennials, the Gen Zers, the Silicon Valley types, these are all the same people who see themselves as hip and progressive and big environmentalists. Bullshit. You're money-hungry opportunists, and you're not allowed to pretend you care about the environment. You are aware that the bulk of crypto mining is done with solar power, right? According to the journal Nature, Bitcoin's growth could single-handedly push global temperatures above the tipping point of 2 degrees Celsius. I know, melting ice caps can wait. Your Green New Deal involves cash. Social scientists call this cognitive dissonance, a disconnect between who you think you are and what you actually do. I call it being full of shit. <laughs> This video that you produced is the most full of shit thing I've ever seen in my life. And you're sitting there saying that we're full of shit? Dude, you gotta be kidding me, bro. Remember back when Bill Maher had a show called Politically Incorrect and actually was politically incorrect as opposed to being a mouthpiece for the current establishment? I don't know much in this world, but I do know that Bill's statements today will age like fine milk. Wow, all I gotta say is, that video was literally the definition of government propaganda. Anyways, thanks for joining me, Shane Killian. Thanks, Daps. I'll catch you all on the next one. Stay strong and be free.